Okay, boys, here we go. Manicure. It is live right now, boys. It is live right now. Get your Pog Champs ready. All right, the Path of Exile Manifesto is live right now. I'm going to look at it. Nobody skip ahead. No skipping ahead. Anyone who spoils shit that's ahead, you will be permabanned from the chat. Do you understand? You'll be permabanned. Okay, so do not do that. Okay, boys. Path of Exile, Lake of Calandra. We're hoping for melee quack, that's buffs. That's not quack a bug, quack quack chat looking quacking cute today quack. Melee buffs. All right, big melee buffs. We're hoping lightning strike nerfs, detonate dead nerfs, all those dogs. Okay, well, melee buffs. All right, boys, defense nerfs. Yeah, I, I mean, taking power out of auras. Right? Take- nerfing, uh, determination, grace, all that dog shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Taking power out of- Cause right now you put auras on, your character's like- like- oh, like, invulnerable. Path of XL, Lake of Calandra, contains a number of balance changes. But ahead of the official announcement live stream next week, we have prepared a preview of our planned character balance changes and our thoughts behind them, so that you'll have plenty of time to think about them and provide feedback before the expansion launches. These are not the full patch notes. They only contain direct ch changes to character balance that are still subject to change. Defense balance. The most substantial changes to character defenses contained in the 3.16 expansion have desired effect of encouraging players to invest more heavily into character defenses besides life stacking. We're happy with this direction, but we will be making further changes aimed at making some of the most powerful defensive layers require more investment and improving diversity in defensive options. We're making a set of changes to this in the goal of 3.19, but we are also considering further changes for future expansions and we'll be refining these plans based on the discussion uh, and your feedback. Okay, problem. Spell suppression is intended to be mostly accessible to characters on the right side of the passive tree. However, spell suppression values on item modifiers are high enough that any character can reasonably reach 100% suppression chance through items alone. And passive skills that gun suspicion, uh, suppression are relatively weak in comparison. This results uh, in capped spell suppression feeling like a mandatory pickup for most characters that want strong defenses rather than mostly an option to complement evasion focused builds. Oh shit, bitch. So basically, this is like the bullshit where all the fucking little cucks, little DD cucks and shit, they won't even take any notes. They just use the reroll fucking gear option and get suppressed life gear. And then you would just capture suppress without even having to use any points. So look. Reduce the values of spell suppression granted by item modifiers. Increase the amount of spell suppression granted by passive skills and other few sources. Oh shit. Dude, that's nicer for gameplay because that means you've got slightly more power on the tree and like pick your gear. It means gear is easier, right? Although it fucks over people. Like my current lightning strike build, I believe, gets fucked over because he's capping his suppression from gear and you won't have to do that. Oh wow, how much does it go down by? Armor's gel can roll to 8 to 10%. Previously 17 to 20. Holy shit. Wait, what the fuck? It's like halved. Chances to suppress on the 5 to 6. Previously 8 to 10. Not quite. I mean, 8 to 10. Wait, 5 to 6. Actually, wait, what the fuck? Oh my god, it is. Up to 13 to 14. Crafted versions of these with 20 to 22. Oh my god. And they nerfed the Eater of Wills Implicit modifier from fucking 10% at the best and slow roll. 12. Okay, it's not too nerfed. So you basically get like a little bit more than half the suppression from gear. So basically it looks like this. Literally, it's like suppression from gear is like half, but maybe a little bit less than half. Okay, small passive skills in the Invasion Suppression Tree now grant 4% from 3%. Innovate Notable gives 15% from 12%. Wait, wait, suppress is getting harder though, isn't it? Because it's like they nerfed it on gear by like literally half, and then it only increased by like 20% on the tree. Well, maybe this will, I wonder if this will make um, Raider slightly more viable because of the fact that they actually yeah the ton of spells are pushing. Okay, whatever. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. Problem. Arctic Armor does not grant enough defensive power to compete with other defensive reservation skills, particularly since the majority of protection is only granted when the player is standing still. Solution. Substantially increase the amount of damage reduction while stationary provided by Arctic Armor. We will likely continue to explore more efficient defensive options for characters that spend a lot of time standing still in future content updates. 21% less physical damage taken while stationary and 20% reduced damage taken from fire damage. Wait, this is gonna be pretty fucking good for like, let's a big flicker strike buff, bro. I mean, I can respect them buffing this. I don't know how good that is though, necessarily. I mean, it's certainly good for builds that stand still a fuck ton, but not many builds stand still because you stand still, you kind of just die immediately, right? I mean, I can see it being good for flicker strike. I mean, you can deliberately stand still for certain attacks as well though, right? Think about this. Do you have any slams in the game of physical? Like pretty much every single one of them. Okay, so if you see a slam coming, you could intentionally stand still for a flat 20% damage reduction. That's pretty powerful. Like, I could see this getting abused, right? Like imagine standing still with active armor and then using like a 100% fortify effect at the same time while standing still and just tanking slams intentionally. Bone Shatter kind of stands still a decent- I mean, yeah. 
Yo, huge bone shadow buff. You're actually right. Arctic armor equals huge bone shadow buff. True, true, true. Big, big, true. Big. It's actually massive for jug even. Problem. Defiance Banner provides a substantial percentage increase to armor and evasion. On top of other benefits for a low investment. It therefore grants all characters a way to further scale large amounts of armor and evasion granted by determination and grace skills. It also disproportionately benefits characters that do not have easy access to armor and evasion scaling on the passive skills. And when combined with the determination and grace, lastly characters use or affect the scale armor and evasion almost as effectively as characters directly investing into armor and evasion okay. bonuses. Yes. It kind of makes sense though. I mean, Divine Spanner is OP as fuck and it's bullshit because it means like basically it reduces the value of percentage increase to armor on the tree it severely diminishes it and they gain a lot more benefit out of it because as a percentage they get more value i mean they should change it to a multiplier right surely right surely this is what they're gonna do they're not gonna they're gonna change it from reduce the amount by a ton but then change it to be a multiplier to armor innovation that's what i would do if i was there but did they do that let's see Substantially reduce armor evasion granted by Defiant spanner so you, you reduce that crit by a bit bro what the fuck is this Yo, GGG, if anyone's listening, I'm getting some feedback right now. Okay, yo, change this to be like 10% more armor and more evasion. So reduce it again, but then make it more. And then that way, characters that are investing heavily can get lots of value. You know what I'm saying? It's it's gonna be dog shit. People who actually have investment in armor and evasion aren't even gonna use this fucking banner because of the amount, the small amount. That's like a single fucking notable. You're gonna, I'm gonna reserve for that? Dude, uh, fuck Okay, off. problem. The, ions, the arrow dancing keystones penalty to melee uh, evasion chance feels too punishing, even for characters with substantial investment. No one takes that shit. Solution change arrow dancing to provide less of an extreme penalty to melee evasion but a less extreme bonus to projectile evasion okay arrow dancing keystone no longer provides 40 percent more evasion to projectile attacks or 20 percent less okay instead and now provides evasion rating is doubled against projectile attacks and is 25 percent less evasion rating against melee attacks oh wow you get a 2x in your evasion rating onto a project but then you get like a 0.75 multiplier against melee like if you're passing past it in your range cuck build this is probably worth doing Problem, grassing male uh, modifier that provides 100% increased global defense is probably too much value in a build heavily invested in for a single slot. Okay, solution. The previous modifier that can roll grasping males, which provides increased global defense, is now has a value of 50%, previously 100%. Get shit on. That's that, that, uh, that weird, that's that weird fucking breach armor shit, right? Solution, uh, yeah, we already read that. Problem. <coughs> Gravicus Veil modifier on body armor provides a percentage of your maximum life as an shield. Adds a huge amount of survivability to many builds. For the low investment of a single benchcraft modifier, grinding energy shield to light-based builds was often not valuable in the past as those builds uh, didn't have a sensible way to recover energy shield in combat. For the recent addition of Ghost Dance and Divine Shield. Yo, they're nerfing my strat, bro! The Gravicus Enchant combined with Divine Shield, bro! It's OP. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is my dude. I, I was doing this with Bone Shatter. They're the, the nerfing my build, chat. Okay, no, chat. Everyone was calling it a meme until you won. That's that's how I was doing the crazy of Divine Shield regen. Nobody was doing that. Everyone was saying Divine Shield shit. Why are you speaking in it? I'm talking whenever they re release Divine Shield, pussy. I'm not even doing it now. What? Oh shit. Among other changes, made re uh, relatively small amount of energy shield, black page builds more valuable. Okay, solution. Rework the graphics available modifier instead, greater percentage of physical damage taken as. Oh wow. 8 to 9% of physical damage taken as fire damage. And that's still pretty good. Not bad. Fizz taken as like elemental, it's like it reduces fizz damage by like, you know, the percent that you convert by like 75% if you have 75% res, or you can have even higher res. Problem fortification is too difficult to gain for some melee builds and. F Frustrating to use for many others. Yo, that's nice. Yeah, I can fuck with this. I can fuck with this. Melee attack fortify now generate roughly twice as many fortification stacks previously. Wait, what the fuck happens when you hit a harvest bear and get zero though? Like two times zero, still zero. Wait, are we gonna make the fortify versus harvest bears? To be fair, in this balance manifesto, they're gonna say they, they actually deleted harvest, right? They're gonna say we're deleting harvest in this balance manifesto, right? For sure, hundred percent. It's gonna say harvest is deleted. Fortification generation against magic and remorse has been further increased. Nice. Base duration fortification increased to six, previously five. Is that it? The entry small passive skill step fast process provides increased fortification now has a 30% value from 20%. The top of step cluster is uh consists of two small passive skills that provide 40% increased fortification duration. Previously one that at 20. I mean, that's what you're gonna do, right? So they're gonna change this to the fort duration, right? So you're gonna go you're gonna go for the 80% duration for the 12 second fort. 
All right, minion balance. Part of the game about finding items to improve your character. Minion builds historically get most of the power from their gems. And yeah, they literally just stack the fuck out of fucking jewels. That's it. That's all they did. Didn't have many strong options to benefit from finding better items. Overall, uh, goal is changes is to improve the variety of viable minion builds, while also making minion builds more reliant on items. Problem, there are limited options to invest in minion related stats and play again, meaning the base stats have to be inflated to compensate. This leads to most minion builds carrying too little about itemization. Yeah, yeah, it's cringe, bro. When I used to play, when I used to be a Necro main chat, you gave zero fucks, bro. All you cared about was just getting, like, life and shit. You just got life, bro, on your character and res. And then you would just, like, fucking spin around like a Spurg and just easily beat the game. And also limits the potential to scale high-end minion builds with even better items. Solution, lower minion base, life, and damage, but provide more ways for players to invest in minions on their own gear, allowing minion damage survivability to be higher previously for a character with strong items. That's fun. Okay, a bunch of minion bullshit, as you can see here, chat. Bunch of minion bullshit. They nerfed minions, chat. No, it's buff, though. I mean, chat, would you- I would- I would love it if they made melee weaker, but then they said, oh, but we actually made it melee stronger if you get good gear. Because then it's- it provides more of a avenue to min-max. Really? I'm not gonna read all this shit, chat. I'm, I'm not gonna play fucking minion. Okay. Miscellaneous skill and support gem balance. Problem. Skills that cause corpse explosions, especially those that scale ignite, are currently able to deal significantly more damage than intended. Due to an oversight that caused Auric Champion or Colossus corpses to have been approximately 60% more alive than other corpses that can be spawned by the Disarray skill. Solution. Reduce the life of Auric Champion or a Colossus corpses to be that equal of other high life corpses such as Katava Hero. Yo, get fucked. Yo, get 60% nerfed to that shit? Okay, that's good. Oh, then again, it's not like that we're constantly detonating the, the most powerful claws, were they? So it's not gonna be like a 60% nerf. Because, you, wait, you would just desecrate and you'd randomly get a big one, right? It's still gonna be OP as fuck. Problem, skills that cause corpse, uh, skills that cause corpse explosion, uh, derive much of the damage scaling from increased maximum corpse life, mostly from skills in the passive tree. This pressures the builds utilizing these skills to choose a Necromancer Ascendancy class as it provides the last value of the stat. And it means that the cause of enemies you kill are not useful for damage compared to corpses you spawn yourself. Additionally, since the percentage of corpse life dealt as damage by these skills does not scale with the levels, there is no incentive to level them up, especially for build scaling and die damage. Solution. Remove the increased maximum corp corpse life stat from the Necromancer Ascendancy and reduce the values available elsewhere. Increase the percentage of corpse life dealt as damage for all corpse explosion skills to offset the substantial damage loss and have this percentage scale with the level of the skill. Interesting. So wait, they actually have to level their fucking ability up now. Well, it's technically a kind of a buff, right? Because that means they can now use different ascendancies, and it also means they can detonate dead, like, corpses that are in the map. And, like, the giga corpses are gonna do more damage, right? Level 33 detonate dead. Quite a lot of decks, no one's leveling this gem one. Yeah, but they're gonna level it now, aren't they, bitch? Because it's gonna be tied to fucking increased maximum corpse life, motherfucker. Dead? Oh, we'll see. We'll see if it's fucking dead. To be fair... Good riddance. If it is dead, it's fucking cringe. I hate detonate dead. It's a cringe fucking ability. Fuck DD. But, I mean, really, ultimately, when you're balancing your game, you don't want to kill skills, obviously. That's dumb as fuck. You'd rather make your skills in line with other skills so it's a competitive option. So that way it's hard to choose what skill you're going to use because they're all going to be kind of like... Like, completely different and good at different things, but like, you know, overall be pretty balanced, right? Now, obviously, there's going to be something that's the best, but... You know, it's like, as long as the thing that's the best isn't like fucking five times as good. There you go. Problem. When Fire Trap's damage was buffed in 3.17, the damage over time of its burning ground was also unintentionally buffed. Reduce the damage of Fire Trap's burning ground. Okay, get fucked. Problem. Cooldown based traps are balanced around being mostly a single target damage supplement with the potential to use them more frequently for builds invested in doing so. However, trap builds currently have an extremely efficient access to increase cap cooldown recovery rate and trap duration, making it easier than intended to rely on these traps as a main source of damage and making their damage uptime over a long duration in five very high. The issue with is most obvious with seismic trap in the current state of the game, but also applies to other cooldown trap skills. Solution, trim the availability of trap cooldown and duration. Compensate the damage cooldown traps. Are they gonna make it where the cooldown doesn't start till the duration of the trap is over? Are they gonna do that? I hate when they do that. I fucking hate when they do that. Fast traps it no longer has a 10 to 29% skill hook duration. Wow, they're gonna take away that much trap? That seems like a lot of duration, bro. Like 29% duration? That seems quite, quite like a lot. Lacy Reconstruction Notable skill has been renamed to Over Prepared and no longer grants 30% increased cooldown recovery rate for throwing traps. Oh, wow. 
So you lost 30% CDR and 30% duration. Holy fuck. A third trap. Uh, fire damage gem. Get fucked. Lightning spy trap. Oh, wow. Wait, Lightning spy got buffed. And same with the fucking flamethrower. Okay, so the, to be fair, it's going to make the tracks more bursty. I mean, they're still going to be OP as fuck, I bet. They're still going to be OP as fuck, right? Okay, uh, problem. Explosive arrow currently has a single stat for hit and ailment damage per arrow stuck in the target. Um... <coughs> Explosive arrow currently has a single stat for hit and ailment damage per arrow stuck at the target, but this makes it impossible to reduce the damage of overwhelming ignite belts without also affecting the underwhelming hit base belts. Split the hit and ailment damage bonus for stacking arrows in the target into two stats. Reduce ailment damage and slightly increase hit damage. Oh shit, what the fuck? They left an explosive arrow, dude? I mean, I like this! How much does the thing buy, though? 5% more damage with hit and ailment per explosive arrow target? Instead, now it's 6% more damage with the hits, and 3% more. Oh, shit! Oh, that got fucking nerfed Giga, bro. What is that? Doing some mass hit chat? What, what the fuck? But that much? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's like, what, like 40%, 30%, 33%, right? Okay, huge, huge, huge. All right, uh, I mean, that's massive. It's it's an entire skill gem removed. It's an entire support link. And so it's like you went from a fucking 6 link to a 5 link in a single patch. That it said, you know what? You you were doing if you were doing six link damage. Now you're doing five link damage, bitch. Uh, when spell based damage values were drastically increased, during one seven methods of triggering spells have had their power reduce uh, in compensation when cast damage taken support cast if they're omitted. Solution: increase the damage penalty of cast and damage taken support. Reduce the damage bonus of cast and death. Is this because that fucking one guy? Wait, there was one. There was I was some Russian guy just one shotting bosses with cast on death. They, like GGG got one guide, bro. Bro, that's such an unviable niche build. Wait, am I crazy? Am I crazy, chat? I don't know if I'm crazy or not. I feel like it's just one guy, but I mean, uh, whatever. It's meta on stuff. Cool, really? Wait, fucking cast on death? I mean, whatever, I guess. The nerf cast on damage taken damage. Pretty cringe. Gonna be honest, pretty cringe. Like, the nerf and, the nerf and fucking, the, the, the fucking infinite loot builds. Uh, problem, the alumnus alternative quality of cast on death makes it too easy to guarantee critical strike and boss. Solution, quality. Wow, <coughs> they really fucking nerfed the shit out of this. Okay, problem. Divine Blessing support is intended to allow characters who do not wish to reserve much of their mana to still use an aura by casting an aura for a normal mana cost every few seconds. The cost of the supported aura is calculated based on the aura's original reservation requirement. And therefore, it usually requires spending a large portion of your maximum mana. I mean, we just linked it to blood magic, right? We just linked it to blood magic and then it was good to go. So, it's fine. However, due to technical limitations, the cost is still calculated based on the size of your mana pool if paid for using life. This allows to players who are reversing most of their mana to support aura, both divine blessing and life test. Occasionally spend a few thousand life to gain an extra aura beyond the amount they would otherwise be able to run. Yeah, what what the fuck? Prevent life death support from supporting blessing skills to match its counterpart. Wow. I mean that's a that's a huge enough. To be fair though, I didn't like the gameplay anyway, so I'm fine with that. Bro, that was cringe. Like, oh, literally every fucking build you play, you have to have Divine Blessing with Life Tap, and you have to keep spamming a fucking aura, and you have to keep chunking your life away and pressing the extra button, and like, it just took up another key when your build might already have like a fuck ton of keys, and it's like, it was just kind of annoying. To be fair, that's a good nerf. I don't like pressing that shit anyway. So, fuck it. I'm okay with that. So now nobody has to do that anymore. Although everyone loses fucking pride, basically. <laughs> or, you know, or you lose determination. But, I mean, losing an aura is massive, though, considering how overpowered the auras are. Problem size of provides a large amount of power to projectile builds, but also provides a powerful flash chat generation. Yo, remember when you guys were talking shit to me because I'm using Sniper's Mark and no one else is using Sniper's Mark? And I bet you're using Sniper's Mark now because it's straight up better. You remember whenever you were talking shit and saying, using my Sniper's Mark? It's literally OP chat. Okay, uh, generating a life flask in particular provides a lot of mostly hidden power for builds utilizing Smiper's Mark, even though it was really a consideration when deciding whether or not to use the skill in a build. The combination of the projectile stats and flask generation put the skill into a state that's too powerful compared to other mark skills. Solution removes the life and mana flash generation from Smiper's Mark. You may see these stats appear again in the future. Wow! They never my build, chat. They never my build. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, fuck you. I mean, fair enough, though. Uh, to be fair, that fucks over the range cucks more than the melee cucks, right? So who cares? Who cares, bro? 
Hardest fab was previously commonly used to provide an extra target hit. And then they nerfed it so you can't even do that and it's cringe. Allowing mini skills to benefit from extra uh, damage splashing. Uh, projectile train and using single targets. Yes, it was very good because it means you could like double the damage of static strike and shit. Uh, cooldown was added uh, to being hit. I just fair in 317. But this cooldown. Uh, but this cooldown is necessarily per entity, meaning that the Hydra Sphere still provides an enormous damage bonus in cases where many different entities are hitting it. Most notably, minion builds. Wow, what? Only allow Hydra Sphere to be hit by an entity that casts it. Wait, with fucking minion builds using like ancestral call or some shit? And like splashing? I don't understand. Or were they doing minion builds that had chain? I mean, it would literally double the damage if it worked. Okay. Problem, due to Path of Exile's consistent evolution, there are sometimes skill and support gems that are uh, left feeling underwhelming to use. Okay, yeah, okay. Solution, carry out a routine balance pass and a selection number of underwhelming skills and support gems with the aim of making them more attractive options. <gasps> Yo, this is gonna be the melee buffs! This is gonna be the melee buffs! Until you realize the buff, please sell my buff, cleave. Okay, you get an extra two radius on cleave. Okay, okay. Crack Lance buff, okay. Decoy totem buff. Devouring totem, okay. Energy blade, oh shit. Energy blade now has two handed energy blades, right? 70% from what previously 50%. Oh wow, big energy, big energy blade buff to two handed energy blades. Firestorm now has one impact, okay. Firestorm buff. Haste, haste is always dog shit, unless you have a like, watch's eye. Haste now grants 10% movement speed and 15% attack and cast speed at level 1, previously 4 and 9, and now up to 15 and 24 and 20. Is that even any good, bro? Vile Haste now grants 16% increased movement speed. Uh, I guess you can run quickly with it, which is good, so if you have damage or survivability is capped out and you just want more movement speed. I don't know. Seems kind of dog shit. The fuck? So we have one melee buff so far, and it's increased the radius by 2. That's what they did. They increased the radius of cleave by two. Wait, it's fine. We're gonna scroll down. There's gonna be some big buffs to melee. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Reeve. Reeve now has 170 percent effectiveness, up from 150 and 250. Previously 225. Bar Reeve now has 250 percent increase effectiveness damage from 200 and 350 at 20. Thing with Reeve, right, is that it's not a slam and it's not a strike. So it's like, and this, it, you don't get to get seismic or any of that other bullshit, but you can do multi-strike shit with it, which is kind of good. It has, it, it attacks quickly as well. I wonder how competitive that it's, wait, let me have a look at Reef. What's the attack rate on Reef? Is it faster than one? Or is it just one? So it's not slow, it's just, so it's just 225, but it's, it's at base attack speed. Whereas if you look at something like Sunder, it'll be like 75% of base. So like it does 275, but you, you have to go like this. 275 multiplied by 0.75 and it's actually now Reeve is actually doing well okay if sun has got more going on but like if you just look at the base but then with the attacks we multiply you can see that Reeve is actually higher dps but sun slams it scales with fucking shit and you get like more damage get the idea i mean maybe it's something now maybe it's something now I hate Val Reef though. I hate the way Reef plays. Reef was so annoying. Reef is like a well, Reef is like a fucking build that like it's like you don't want to stop because then you lose your Val Reef stacks and then you gotta fucking keep attacking and so then you want you don't want to loot gear on the ground. You know I don't like that. There's people who like that who like there's people who like it. Do you know the chat? There are people who like rampage builds. I fucking hate rampage builds. Scourge Gero buff. Shock no. Where's my melee buffs? Wait, why is my melee buffs? Wait, I'm scrolling and I'm not seeing melee buffs. I've not seen it. Wait, what the fuck? Where's my fucking Shock Nova buff? Solrend, who gives a fuck, bro? Spellslinger, who gives a fuck? Thunder. 325. Earthquake is the pinnacle of like hard hitting. So let's just see what this is. So it's 150 multiplied by 2.5. 375. Wow. So... So it's 15% weaker than an EQ, but it has no delay. They're both the same attack speed.
Talk about your forty six damage gains two radius with each area in the sequence. The wave deals five areas. Wave cannot stop before damaging two areas. Wave causes I got shock waves. Chat, it's so goddamn cute and adorable to see Quinn roleplay someone who remotely understands balance changes. Look at how cute he is. Y His little toes you're, you're can't even reach the ground when he sits down. You're, you're He's just going to roll bone shatter again. You're a moron. Okay, what the fuck? Wait, how good is Sunder right now, mechanically right now? Like, how good is Sunder mechanically? Like, is Sunder? Because this is really good. Because the thing is, EQ is really, really powerful numerically, but mechanically, it's fucking... Well, it's still OP because it's got mega AoE and you can kind of like hit targets without being near them, right? So it's good versus bosses and shit. The question is how, like, how does it feel to play Sunder? Like, how much of the fucking screen does it hit and shit? 60% faster. I mean, that seems kind of powerful. 60% faster Sunder. I could log into the game and try it, but I mean, wait, does someone, wait, Sunder, I'll just type Sunder. Let's watch Sunder. Wait, Sunder. Uh, what do you call this? What was the previous league? Nemesis. Bro, seriously? What is that gameplay chat? What am I looking at right now? I mean, that looks. T I'm gonna be honest. That looks fucking terrible. That looks fucking terrible. That looks dog shit. Like that looks like it hits like a fucking single line in front of you, bro. Like, and even then, it's not like. It's, I mean, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that, bro? What the fuck is that? Peter Sanders showcase. Just kidding, debated. Ah! To your 20 hour ban, pussy. Yo, true. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, true Genesis class has caused multiple balance issues over the years, but changes to the class have increasingly le lifted a, uh, a compelling identity or sufficient power. Solution rework that tricks the idea sanity, focusing more tightly on thematically appropriate defenses and speed. Details will be shared in the 3.19 reveal live stream. That's cool. Wait, what juggernaut? Juggernaut's unbreakable skill is still overly complicated. No! Wait, they're not nerfing my favorite node, are they? Wait, why are you nerfing my favorite node? Why are they moving? That's the only reason I play Juggernaut! That's the only reason I play Juggernaut! It's so I can use Unbreakable with Bone Shatter to regenerate 5k life per second back! Split unbreakable into two narrower but more power. Okay, wait. Unless. Juggernaut's unbreakable node no longer grants 2% regen, 5% regen per second, or 1.5% for an Okay, this, this is the OP component. And now grants 8% of armor applies to elemental damage from hits. I mean, that's pretty good, but they better give me the fucking regen back. And removable. Called untiring. It grants 40% increased life regeneration rate and 1.5% physical damage rendered from hits. Okay. Okay, so wait, Jug's not dead. Jug's not dead. Well, the thing is, I mean, this is very powerful. They're both, I mean. The thing is, you do no damage, then you do no damage. Yeah, that should be one ascendancy point, bro. What the fuck? Why is that four points? Like, if that was one point, then that'd be pretty pog. Right? It's almost like it needs to be, yeah. Well, it's not the same effect, okay? So, it's basically, you're getting like, okay, so 40% increased life regeneration rate? That's nuts. Like, that's like, that's a 1.4 multiplier to all region. Thing is, Jug does no damage. That's the issue. But yeah, you can still pick this node, which is the busted node. Although, I don't know. <laughs> the stupid thing is... This one here was powerful because it gave you 5% reduced damage taken. And it gave you the crazy regen. And you got the crazy armor. Which is what made it so busted. 
but whereas now you don't get any of the other shit. Like, where's they need to add the five percent damage reduction back to that bitch? Like, we need the five percent dr back. I don't know, bro. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Oh my god. I mean, Jug is still a dead ascendancy, bro. I mean, eight percent of armor applies to elemental damage from hits. That's gonna be insanely good for damage reduction versus, like, all flurry damage from element. I mean, it'll make you make you immune to damage. Um, like immune to elemental damage from loads of little hits. So it's gonna be like super overpowered in maps. Um, although it's not gonna do jack shit all versus the big, big, big elemental hits. Okay, cheats and spat. Tower's fast strength is not provide enough uh, damage to attract slam builds. Especially when it has to compensate for not being exertable, which is super cringe. Solution slams used by Tower's chosen now that 100% more damage previously 50%. <clears throat> Trigger the spell when you attack a non with a non vile slant skill near an enemy. S skills used by Mirage Chieftains deal 40-50% more damage. Skills used by Mirage Chieftains cannot repeat. Mirage Chieftain uses skill but not you, just like Mirage Warriors, thus supports the dream. Okay, what are you doing here? The dream. Where every build is shit. You actually have to make like crazy like Omega geared characters. Every build is shit. Everyone's Quinn now. What he's in he's meaning that is an ethical, right? That's what he means. He's implying that I play ethical builds, so then therefore people are gonna be forced into playing ethical builds. Okay, yes, because I'm in such an ethical gamer, which is true. I mean you could have worded that slightly better. Okay, wait. This is pretty big. Because you can do some stupid damage with Towas Chosen in the past, right? I've seen some cunts use that shit in like one tap, uh, like Conquerors. You can't exert it, but it is exerted, right? Because it deals double damage. It does 100% more damage. But you can't fist of war it, right? That's the issue. Wait, where the fuck does it read? Where the fuck does it read? This is some bullshit like... Wait, fist of war. How does it say? Boost is not applied to repeats of the attack. Cannot boost attacks every more than one for seconds. Attacks boost is just supported decisively. Support scan skills running above this. Then using the cannons about vile skills or triggered skills. That's the issue. Skill is triggered. Yeah, so that's why it doesn't work. That's the annoying thing. So that's what makes Toaz. Basically, if Fist of War worked with Toaz chosen, then it'd be GG as fuck. But it doesn't. I mean, this is interesting. I wonder, maybe there's something to be done there. Maybe there's something there. I don't know what kind of build. I don't know. I wonder how good that is now. Interesting. Okay, uh, Pathfinder's Master Alchemist skill is quite weak, which also causes Pathfinder to be pushed mostly towards chaos-based builds, and as uh, non-chaos builds do not have enough compelling synergy skills to choose from. Uh, add more power to Master Alchemist. Pathfinder's Master Alchemist no longer uh, grants 20% chance to freeze, shock, and ignite. That was cringe as fuck. Instead, now causes magic utility flasks to have 20% increased effect. Bro, what the fuck? Holy shit. Bro, what the fuck? That's powerful, bro. That's fucking, that's like, that's fucking powerful, bro. Okay. Problem. Omni and Ashes of the Stars are more powerful unique amulets and that have been adopted by a wide variety of builds since the introduction of Super Layless. However, while Ashes of Stars is a relatively standalone item that enhances the individual strengths of a build, Crystallized Omniscience Thank you, an encourages anonymous players gift for gifting zero underscore seven underscore a subscription. Crystallized Omniscience. Okay, so this is the fucking stupid item that I'm trying Why to find, by the way. Why did not touch Nightblade? I'm Chris tired of being a claw cuck sad egg. Crystallized omniscience. Uh, wait, dude, did you just spoil? Lily perm better. If you just, I'm what chat. I swear to God, do not spoil any spoilers. Get permanent. Just permanent that guy. Okay. Crystallized omniscience uh, encourages players to devote substantial portion of their builds towards stacking attributes. It also makes it easy to do so, providing the elemental resistance, which would otherwise be Need for space with the tributes on your items. This reduces the diversity of itemization across a wide variety of elemental builds. Solution. Lower the amount of elemental penetration and resistance granted by the crystallized omniscience. The aim of it still being powerful, but not the ideal choice for a large variety of builds. Oh, shit, bitch. 
one percent ORS per fifteen previously. Oh shit! Oh fucking big fifty percent nerfs here, boys. Holy fuck! Oh my god, I got fucked. It got fucked in the ass. The thing is. It got diminished value anyway. It's still gonna be really good. It's just gonna be required. It just requires you to get more omniscience now, right? It requires you to get yeah. So thirty-three percent is still good. Well, the thing is, you got less and less value the more attributes you stack, and you got the most value in the initial attributes you stack. Like if there was a graph of like, basically, and if there's a graph of value chat, it would look like this. Like it, it's it's like this, right? It's like, it's basically like that. Looks like this. So now maybe they cut it down to here, but you still get the majority of the value anyway, right? You still get the you still get the you still get the you still get the majority of value, is what I'm saying. Because it's got hardcore diminishing returns. Um, because of the fact that that every time you stack every one LA pin becomes a relative less of a damage increase. Okay, chat. Do you understand? That's you get it's less damage per point of LA pin. It it is. Yes, it is. Pin doesn't work that way. No, it does. No, you're wrong. You can chat. You're completely wrong. We're gonna. I mean, whatever. It's, it's just. It, 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 but the point is, you still get most of the value anyway. It just means you just to get maybe a little bit more stats. Thank you, an anonymous. So whatever. I mean, subscription. So it's probably still gonna be good. So if it drops, it's still gonna be pog. Okay, melding your flesh is a unique jewel that transfers your highest maximum elemental resistance to your other elemental resistances, though it comes uh, with a substantial penalty of, to your base resistances. It's an extremely powerful item that has outcompeted all forms, uh, other forms of elemental damage mitigation for well itemized builds. Solution add a penalty to maximum elemental resistances to mel max melding of the flesh, forcing builds that want to reach 90% all resistance commit to the build before reaching it. Melding of flesh now has minus 4 to. Uh, to minus six max alley res. This change does not affect. Oh shit, get fucked. Get fucked. I mean, it was too OP anyway, bro. It, it was too OP anyway, bro. So now you have to, now, now you get fucked a bit, but. I mean, how much max res you get in like a single purity anyway? You still get a fucking big amount of max res just from a single purity, regardless, right? So it just removes like, uh, how much does like a level 25 purity or whatever? You just need a shield rage 100%. 67 with aura effect. Okay. Okay, miscellaneous character and item balance problem. Critical strike chance provided by brittle ailments says that an enormous effect of damage builds. <laughs> no! <coughs> I abuse this! I was a fucking old ailment Andy, dude. What is happening? What, uh, what are, they, are they fucking over old ailments? To the, they're gonna fucking destroy it, right? As more and more methods of visiting the old ailments are added to the game, brittle has begun to overshadow other ailments. It's too powerful, bro. Let's be honest here. Yeah. It's too powerful. Reduce the amount of critical strike provided by Brittle to make it more comparable to Scorch and Shock. Bro, what the fuck? Bro, what the fuck is that? I mean, that nerfed the shit out of the Brittle Boots as well, didn't it? That nerfed the shit out of the Brittle Boots as well. The Brittle Boots got destroyed. Damn. Holy fuck. I mean, basically, yeah. I mean, yeah, you 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 basically got. It's just like a, I mean, it's still like I mean, what what does ass mark two percent, right? Holy fuck! I mean, I mean, it's still good. It is still good. Like six flat crit is still insane, right? Ah, uh, but then again, having the ability to shatter corpses is really powerful. So I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Daddy working this spilled glue. Okay. Problem, the introduction of reservation efficiency has encouraged a much larger range of builds and investment reservation skills to a small or moderate degree. It's not a problem in itself, but the current, uh, but currently the options for doing so are similar for every build and provide slightly too much generic power relative to the investment required. Reservation mastery options are the biggest outliers in power as they provide large amounts of power than uh, entire notable passive skills. Solution, remove the mana reservation Wait, remove the mana reservation masteries and reduce the power of the aura effect and life reservation masteries. Oh shit, that was the OP one, bro. Holy shit. That was the OP one, bro. Oh my god. Wait, so you lost an aura and then you lost another aura. Oh my god. That's big. I mean, that's fucked. That's fucking, this is like, I'm telling you, like, they're all, all you aura stacking cucks, uh, like myself. I mean, that's crazy, actually. 
Pretty much every single build I was playing was using two fucking aura wheels, though. I didn't even know it's going to be worth doing it. Basically, you still get minus the res on uh, some of these nodes, though, don't you, chat? You still do get, like, reservation efficiency, reservation efficiency. Hmm, 8%, 8%. I mean, it's still going to be... They're probably, it's probably still going to be worth it if you get an extra aura. But yeah, fuck. Holy shit. I mean, that makes it way harder. But I mean, a lot of builds, it's like, oh, you just get a single fucking mastery, and then that's it. You get a bonus aura. Whereas now it's going to be like, nah. You're going to need to get two wheels to get a single aura. Problem, line of flask modifiers that grant flask charges when you are hit by an enemy to make it too easy to get your flask tap for most non-boss content. What the fuck? Are they nerfing that shit? Holy shit, man. <clears throat> the uh, sinners modifiers can only be rolled on flask. Transgression manifest flagellants right now for a one, two, and three charges. Previously four, six, and seven. Bro. Holy shit, bro. Okay, so the infinite flask glitch is gone now, chat. You can't do that anymore. They, they did buff mage blood there. That's the mage blood build, technically speaking. The veil crafted modifiers that cause uh I mean that's that's a that's a such a large these are really big changes, chat. Like brittle getting destroyed, literally a permanent aura removed, another aura removed. I mean, holy shit. The veil and crafted modifiers that it cause skills to cost no mana or life or focus undermine the importance of skills and constrained design space as mentioned in the three months patch notes. We originally just said uh planned to assemble them with three point one eight. But this pushed back due to the freeze and character balance. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Some solution no aura skills cost no mana or life while focus can no longer appear in valve modified amulets. Okay. Okay. Problem the timeless jewel exclusive chain breaker keystone is too difficult to properly use while also limiting the potential to provide other sources of rage generation. Rework Chainbreaker to lean into Rage as a resource in a more extreme manner and remove penalty, uh, potentially unwanted interactions with other sources of Rage regeneration. Chainbreaker has been reworked. It now grants one Rage uh, regenerator for every 25 mana regen per second. Mana recovery from regeneration is not applied. Wait, mana recovery from regeneration is not applied. It's skills cost plus three Rage. Okay, wait, what the fuck? Wait, so what was what was the issue? What was the issue before? People were like, uh, were using- Because I remember people using Chainbreaker. Nobody's using it. Cunts were using it though, right? I wonder how, I wonder how interesting this, this shade will be for like, Rage, Rage Storm or Comstorm Storm or whatever the fuck it is. And then Rage is gone. Chainbreaker and Necromancer. Mmm, problem. Damage recouped is live is a relatively new recovery option, and there are currently not enough sources of it. Available players who wish to invest heavily in it. Solution, incrementally improve the availability of the stat by adding it to the dual modifier pool. <laughs> Pockets. We'll include a list of the changes and potentially more or updates to these in the full patch notes before release. A bit more detail uh, about some areas such as improvements to the Trickster Sensei class. That Trickster Remix is going to be interesting. Bro, okay, what do we need? We need more melee buffs. You need to buff the Jug more. The Jug needs more buffing. Okay. Yep, but the jug needs more buffing. <laughs> look at the comments. I have a look at the comments. I'll look at the comments. I mean, overall, though, I like the direction they're heading in. No, I think I like the direction, though. I like that, like, like, for example, like, I didn't like pressing Divine Blessing Aura. Like, you know, it was dumb that everyone could just get, like, fucking Grace, Determination, uh, Defiance Banner, and just take no damage. Like, this is all, this is like, it was dumb. So, like, it's good, it's good, although, I wonder how it's gonna feel to play. Depending on what the thing is, it depends on the new League mechanic, what, what they're bringing in with the new League mechanic. Yeah, they need to nerf- they need to nerf Lightning Strike as well! Hey, where's the Lightning Strike changes and the Nightblade changes? Why aren't they nerfing Lightning Strike or fucking Nightblade? They nerfed Omni, but it doesn't matter. Lightning Strike still deals Quinn double damage. Quinn is stuck in white maps. Like, Quinn is stuck in white maps. I can play Quinn fucking- the new league cause he is back in strand. I can play Nightblade fucking Wild Strike, bro. 
Except they can't because lightning strike just it just deals double damage. Okay? But I'm playing LS right now with that Omni and I've killed every single non uber boss in the game. With ease. And then I switched to, I mean, Lightning Strike is just, it's, it, I, the reason I can't use other abilities is because Lightning Strike just deals double damage. Chat, I got a little 99 character on SFAC, just waiting, dude, look. Chat, do you understand? You're saying 0 to 7, dude. Look, 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 look bitch. Look, bitch. Look, bitch. Look, look, it's just waiting there, bro. He's just wait. he's just waiting there to just pop off, okay? He's just sitting there. He, like, 7 to 7 already did, I just haven't done it yet. Do you understand me? It's done, I just haven't done it yet. Did league already. Okay. <clears throat> I'll be honest, I'm not gonna lie. This might be a league I only play like a month or a month and a half in. And I'm not saying that because I wouldn't enjoy playing this or something like that. I say it because there's not much stuff here, right? There's nothing new here. It's just like there's you get less. And when there's you when everybody feels like they have less, people are less interested in the game. They're not gonna want to play it as much and play it as long. So I think this is the most this coming league. We'll see what the league mechanics are yeah, or whatever, content, that bro. does matter, but like, this looks like the most dead league, bro. potentially, that I've ever seen. No shot. It's a content, bro. It's a content. I feel like they're going to add new skills in. So A, there's going to be new skills. B, in-game content. There's going to be a new melee skill. Chat, there's going to be a new melee skill. Like, yo, straight, there's going to be new skills. There's new skills. Chat, they're gonna introduce new skills. They are gonna announce new skills. For sure. No shot they don't enter. There's gonna be fucking 12 new skill gems. Minimum. Minimum. Coping okay. Poly. And there's gonna be a fuck ton of end game content. That's what's gonna that's what that's the reality here. That's the reality here. Straight up. Mark my words, chat. Mark my words. New skills and end game content. Also, they're gonna nerf harvest as well. Because he is God damn game.